Look at this data. Whether it's heartbeat signal, sensor readings from an industrial machine or the price movement of a stock, it all has one thing in common. It's noisy, complex and constantly changing. Trying to analyze this kind of sequential chaos with manual methods or simple filters just doesn't work. We need a tool to build for this complexity. That tool is 1D Convolution Neural Network. Ready to see how it works? We'll start by breaking down the full 1D CNN architecture and then dive into the step-by-step -step math behind the powerful convolution process. Convolution process is the core heart of the 1D convolution neural network. We have an input array and we use a kernel which we flip and then we do the slide and multiply operation which is a convolution filter application. And we multiply by the sliding window and we create an output feature map which is later used as a core fundamental building block. Before we proceed, let's address a key technical point that can sometimes confuse people in the deep learning world, which is a difference between convolution and cross-correlation. We have our input sequence and non-symmetric kernel with values 1, 2, 3. How the first calculation would look? 1 times 1 plus 2 times 2 plus 3 times 3, the output is 14. However, the true mathematical definition of convolution requires one extra step which is the kernel must be flipped before sliding. So the 1, 2, 3 kernel is reversed to become 3, 2, 1. Now the multiplication use the flipped kernel 1 times 3 plus 2 times 2 plus 3 times 1. This result is 10. You can see that the flip changes the final value. In deep learning framework, the flip is usually omitted because the kernel weights are learned anyway, effectively making the learned filter the flipped version if needed. We should also understand uh, what kind of kernels do we have. There are two core kind of kernels. One is called asymmetric and other is non-symmetric. As we know that kernel is, or a filter is a small array of weights. This could be asymmetric or asymmetric. This asymmetric when flipped changes the weightage and symmetric remains the same. The most important concept separating a CNN from the traditional signal processing is the learnable kernel. In traditional convolution, like what you might use in an image editor or a simple filter, the kernel values are fixed. They are manually designed to perform a specific task such as detecting sharp edges or smoothing a signal. However, in a convolutional neural network, the kernel is a collection of learnable weights. They don't start with a purpose, they are optimized through the training process to find the most relevant features. So how does the CNN teach itself what the best kernel should be? It all happens inside the training process. First, the kernel are initialized with a small random numbers. The network then runs a forward pass. It uses these random kernels to make a prediction and calculates the overall loss or error. Next, the backward pass or back propagation calculates the precise gradient. This tells us exactly how much each weight contributed to the final error. Finally, an optimizer uses this gradient information to slightly update the kernel weights. This is like a turning a tiny dial to reduce the error. This cycle repeats millions of times until the kernels are perfectly tuned to extract the features that matter most of for the task. And that is why a 1D CNN is so powerful. When we talk about the convolutional neural networks, the dimension either 1D or 2D refers to the shape of the input data and the way the kernel operates. On the left we have the 1D convolution. The input data is a sequential array, like a time series, audio signal or a sentence. The 1D kernel is also a linear sequence of weights. As you can see, the kernel only slides along one axis the length of the sequence to produce a one-dimensional feature map. This output feature map is still a sequence, just a shorter one capturing temporal features. On the right, we have the 2D convolution. The input data is a grid 
or matrix, typically an image, where data varies across both height and width. The 2D kernel is a square shaped filter. This kernel has to slide across two axes, first moving horizontally, then shifting down a row moving horizontally back and so on. This ensures it, it extracts special pattern from every location on the grid. The output is a two-dimensional feature map or a feature image where the special relationships of the original data are preserved. In summary, 1D convolution moves along one axis to capture temporal dependencies while the 2D convolution moves along two axes to capture special features. Let's dive into the core engine of the 1D CNN which is the convolution operation itself. This is where the magic happens. Convolution is essentially about sliding a small window called a kernel or a filter across your input data to produce a new summarized output. We start with our input signal which is a simple sequence of five data points. Below that is our kernel. That is a small array of weights. In this case three weights that the network learns during training. The result of this process is the output signal which is all called a feature map. Notice its length is shorter than the input as determined by the kernel size. Mathematically the process is defined by this summation formula. We multiply corresponding elements and sum the results. Let's begin the slide. The kernel position itself over the first three input value which is 1, 2 and 3. We perform element wise multiplication. 1 times 0 0.5 plus 2 times 1 plus 3 times 0 0.5. Summing those produce gives products give us 4.0. This value becomes the first element in our output feature map. Next the kernel slides one step to the right. Now covering 2, 3 and 4. The calculation repeats 2 times 0 0.5 plus 3 times 1 plus 4 times 0 0.5. The sum is 5. This is the second element. Final step. The kernel slides to cover the last three inputs which is 3, 4 and 5. 3 times 0 0.5 plus 4 times 1 plus 5 times 0 0.5. The final output is 7.0. Convolution is complete. In summary, 1D convolution automatically filters your time series data by sliding a learned kernel performing element wise multiplication and summing the products to extract the meaningful local patterns. The last step before classification is pooling which helps condense the data. We'll look at max pooling starting with our feature map which has a value like 2.5, 4.0 and 5.5. Our goal is to create a smaller pooled output. We use a polling window which in this case is size 2 with a sprite of 1, meaning it slides one step at a time. The window first looks at the first two values which is 2.5 and 4.0. In max polling we simply take the maximum value from that window which is 4.0 and transfer it to the first cell of the pooled output. Now the window slides one step to the right, covering the next two values which are 4.0 and 5.5. Between these two the maximum value is 5.5. We transfer that value to the second cell of the pooled output. The result we have the reduced dimension of our data from the three values to just two, while retaining the most important information which is the highest activation in each local region. Finally, this pooled output is converted into a single one-dimensional flattened vector. This vector sent to the dense classification layer for a prediction. Let's pull all the pieces together and look at the typical architecture of a 1D convolutional neural network. It begins with the input layer which holds our raw sequence data. Here we have a sequence of 10 data points. Next is the convolution layer. This layer contains the learnable kernel which is shown here as 5 by 1 filter. 
when the 5 by 1 kernel slides across the 10 point input, it produces a shorter sequence called the feature map. This map, which is 8 points long, contains the extracted high level features. Following that is the pooling layer. Using max pooling, we reduce the feature map from 8 points down to just 4 points, condensing the information and making the model more robust. The resulting data is then fed into a fully connected layer or FC layer, which learns non-linear combinations of the features. Finally, the network produces a single output, which represents the network's prediction. For example, a simple yes or no classification. These layers are all interconnected, defining the flow of information through the network from raw data to the final prediction. Other than detecting anomaly, we can also sentiment analysis with 1D CNN. Although it is less common, but it could be done. We create the word embeddings and that embeddings could be passed to the CNN detector, which detects the positive, negative and word combinations and which results either positive or negative. So let's understand what could be done with the 1D convolution neural network. It uses a convolution operation, that's why it's called a convolution neural network. It learns pattern in sequential data and these are the common applications of it. Time series analysis, audio signal processing, text classification and sensor data analysis. Let's put it all together and see what we learned. Today, 1D convolution is the core operation in the 1D convolution neural network. CNN learns weight automatically and multiple layer capture hierarchical patterns. These are perfect for sequential data and these are efficient. So now we understand how the CNN works. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.